Hi guys, welcome back to the Cumbrian Homestead. I was just about to go and cut the grass down on the plot there and there was a knock on the door and uh, there was a lady there with a parcel for me and it's from uh, Thompson and Morgan uh, and they are bare-rooted uh, strawberry plants. Um, right, so anyway, I'll explain a little bit more when we get down the plot but I need to go right now and see if we can get these planted up. Catch you in a bit. Yeah, so we're down the plot now. So, yeah, what happened was uh, Thompson and Morgan contacted me um, by email uh, several weeks ago, I guess. Uh, they found one of my videos on YouTube and uh, they liked it and they wanted to feature it um, in a vlog, uh, which has since been released, and I'll put a link to that down below. So, um, it, they entitled it uh, Thompson and Morgan Fruit Masterclass. And I think actually since they released that I've had another one of my videos featured in a follow-up vlog as well. So in return for the use of the video um, they offered me um, these bare-rooted strawberry plants. Uh, there's a dozen I think there should be in here, free of charge. So uh, I wasn't really going to turn that down because uh, the strawberries I've got are really old and you know they're not very good at all so I thought you know I could have had some other things but I just fancied a few strawberries anyway let's get the uh, box open and have a look see what's inside so as a quick tip fruit guide here and then looks like there's a bit of a delivery note and then um, yeah okay it says six there so I don't know whether there's another box coming or what because they did promise me twelve anyway as you can see, I'm hoping you can see, the variety is Molling Centenary. So the first thing I need to do is get these in some water and get these roots soaked for a few minutes. So I've got some old uh, meat trays here. Now I'm going to use the fill half full or something with the rain water. So we're just going to um, show you the where are we at there we are got a nice root system so we'll just lay those in there in fact I think I can afford to uh, take some of those roots off Shorten them a look because they're going. These are going in um, troughs. I'm not. I'm not planting them in the open ground. They're going to go in troughs. So. Okay. So now let's get a potting mix ready. The potting mix I'm using is about 50-50 of the municipal compost mixed with some ordinary multi-purpose compost. Into that, of course, I'll just add some vermiculite. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, Gromar. Again, 777 NPK, and also uh, some potash. And then we'll just mix that in, and then we can fill our troughs up. Those are the troughs I'm using. They're uh, 24 inches internally, the length. So I'll probably put three crowns to. I have two of them, so three crowns in each one should be all right. Right, 
I've roughly marked out the positions where the strawberry plants are going to go. So they've been soaking around about 20 minutes or so, something like that. I'm just going to pull that back, slide them in, just so the base of the crown is sort of sat on the surface, if you will. Filming in the soil around the roots. That's one done. I hope they'll be happy in the new home. Probably, uh, I can't, I might get some fruit this year, but the main thing is to get those crowns and the root systems strongly established and then looking for a good crop uh, in 2022. So we'll go and have a look at the uh, micro orchard. There's a few pest problems I want to uh, show you, but before we do that, I'll just have a quick look at the elephant garlic. So this is the elephant garlic bed looking really good and uh, I've just noticed the other day the scapes are coming now so I need to get those uh, cut off pretty soon. This cod and apple has flopped over so we need to get a tie there and get it uh, back at the correct angle again. In this asparagus bed I'd actually noticed just here, there's a couple of seedlings come up, which I'm absolutely delighted about. So, in fact, I think there's three. There's another one here. One, two, three. So, um, I might just let them grow on for another week or so, and then get those potted up. It's always great to have spare plants. So we're over on the micro orchard, and I was here yesterday, and one of the first things I noticed was this gooseberry bush showing the classic signs of attack by gooseberry sawfly. You can see how the larvae, the little caterpillars, have been stripping the leaves. So I'm going to have to um, try and find something to spray them with. Also, the, the other thing here is, this happens usually every year, but in the tips here, I don't know if you can see that, but it's crawling with aphids, so it's probably going to have to be some kind of uh, neem oil and soap for those. I'm not sure whether they'll work against the sawfly. Uh, I, I did get, to, I heard that uh, rhubarb um, leaves boiled in water and then uh, strained, obviously, and then those would work against the sawfly. So I might try that. But we need to take action fairly soon but we've got rain coming in tomorrow which of course will wash off anything i spray on so it's all a question of timing i suppose so i managed to find one they're incredibly hard to spot especially without my glasses on but uh, yeah i know it's about a centimeter long that one or perhaps just over but anyway 
that's the end of that one. So we're looking at one of the multi-grafted pairs and uh, yesterday I spotted this uh, symptom here in the leaf, it's uh, pear leaf blister mite. Now apparently it's a bit late to do anything now. Uh, the only thing I've read is that you can pick off the infected leaves so I might have a go at that. This, this whole branch here, I mean look at the top there, I'll just pull that down a bit. You can see it's really badly affected the foliage but it's probably going to just uh, drop off. So I probably will spend some time trying to pull off the affected leaves just to try and contain the spread. So this is where I'm trying to grow some more root stocks. This is uh, MM106 and on here you can see the classic signs of powdery mildew. So I think neem oil actually might be uh, useful for that otherwise I can just uh, snip the top off. But again, it's just something that you need to uh, keep an eye for. And on these sweet peas here, they're uh, really slow growing because it's been so cold and windy. Need a bit of heat really, but don't know if you can make that out on the telltale signs of pea weevil on the leaf there. Sort of nibbling a U-shaped right around the edge of the leaf. And finally on this row of black currants, We've got some more leaf blister mite here. Well, to be honest, I'm not over worried about that. It doesn't really ever seem to affect the plant too much. But also, what seems to happen every year, and I just pinch the top out. If you can see, we've got aphids in the top there. So yeah, I just pinch the tops out. But again, we could spray them with uh, neem oil and insecticidal soap. I spent about maybe 15 minutes picking those about a quarter to a third of a bucket of leaves off the pear. So there's only one place they're going to go. And hopefully that will help stop the spread. Well that's about it for today. I'd like to say thank you to Thompson and Morgan again for the gift of the strawberry plants. That was really cool. So until next time, take care. Bye for now.